everyone, how's it going? So Michael's is having this seasonal sale. Uh, they have it a couple times a year, and this time they happen to put easels on for sale. Now, I got, I don't know if you can read that, but it is an H-frame easel, adjustable height, and we're gonna see just how nice this is. It was half price. I'd be silly not to get it at this point in time. Let's go! Okay, and welcome to the first voiceover portion of this video, the assembly of this easel. So the box just needed to be as large as its longest part. So it's only about five feet long and it is packed in there. Holy crap, did they pack it in there. The instructions for assembly was just that one slip of paper that you see on the box there. It was probably less help than if I have tried to do it myself. Very little in the way of identifying parts, very little in the way of identifying components to assemble and very little in the way of identifying which direction everything is facing. But you know, aside from not actually telling me what to do or what goes where and what to put into what hole, it was actually pretty good. 10 out of 10 stars. So you can see that the base is very nearly assembled. I'm just putting in the back braces right now. It's, um, they slide up and down on the actual easel part of it to make sure that it is angled the way you want it to. Right now I have it angled almost completely, uh, Vertically. The actual footprint of the easel is pretty good too. It's only about, um, I'd say it's about two foot by two foot and it fits pretty nicely in my fairly cramped studio. Oh my God, this part was probably the worst section in terms of instructions. It did not specify which direction the rails on the sides were supposed to go. It did not specify which part was forward and which part was backwards. The only hint that I got was that the ratcheting system seemed to be on the front, but I could be mistaken. So I sit there for probably about five or six minutes just trying to, just, just thinking, just wasting time, just trying to think of how exactly I'm supposed to do this. This part wasn't that great either because it has two, this set has two almost identical bolt sets. The only difference is that one has a locking nut and the other one doesn't. And that's literally the only difference between the two. And I didn't notice, like it's very hard to tell which is which. The only thing is that in the instructions for one of them, you can see through the nut and for the other one, you cannot. And that is the only distinction that the instructions give you. This rail was all right to assemble. It was fairly straightforward. Like you would assume that the ratcheting mechanism would go on the bottom, which does thankfully turn out to be correct. The, oh, what do you call that? The carriage, I guess you'd call it, on the bottom there, has a little pocket for brushes or paints or whatever you wanna store there, which is pretty handy. Just some finishing touches on it. The carriage has two screws that attach to the ratcheting system to kind of lock it in place and so it doesn't flop around. Very handy. You can actually thank my fiance Katie for the fact that actually all of this is in view because she lent me one of her wider angle lenses, one that she usually uses for recording real estate properties. So Katie, if you're watching this, what are you doing later? Like, we should hang out. I miss, I, I miss your face. And there's the assembly. So despite my complaining, it only took about 40 minutes for it to go together. So that's pretty good. Now let's use it. This camera angle is unusable. That camera angle is unusable. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I gotta do another one. This, dang it, this just ain't fair. So this painting, this painting is cursed. Folks, I put the footage in my computer. I went to bed and then I woke up uh, ready to edit it and found out, actually, no, you have more work to do. So being very frazzled, not knowing what to paint, I grabbed the first image that I could think of, which happened to be a, a bald man in a suit and I started working. This is not a good workflow. Oh boy, is it not a good workflow. Especially when you haven't actually touched oil paints in about six months. But you know, sometimes that's 
Actually, most times, really, that's the reality of being an artist, is you're not good at art 90% of the time. And the only way to get around that is to pump out a ridiculous amount of work and just hide all of the things that didn't work. But to be honest, I'm a little tired of hiding the stuff that didn't work. And I'm a little tired of just pretending that it's talent that got me here. I am not talented. If you look at this painting, you can tell I am not talented. I am good at drawing faces and I am good at drawing faces. And Lord help me, it is so easy to fall into the trap of drawing only the things that you're good at. And that brings me to oil paints. Painting is not intuitive the way that oil pastels are to me. It's a lot easier to dick around with crayons than it is to actually sit down with all your pots and jars of oils and thinners and and you got your oil paints and you got a little brushy washy and you slather it on there and you just kind of like make something that looks like a thing and the only way that you're ever going to get better at doing the brushy brush is by working at the brushy brush you know what's really silly? That lady in the back there with the kitty ears? That was something that I painted with oils too before I took my break. So like, it's it's in there, it's somewhere it's in there. It'll take probably about a dozen paintings before I get back into the swing of things, but it's in there. I personally find that spending on things really motivates me to actually try them. So like, instead of buying the cheapest oil paints, you get student grade oil paints. And instead of buying the cheapest brushes, you get student grade brushes. Really, the goal should be to eliminate the things as much as possible that are going to hold you back. Like bad paints, bad brushes, poor posture, sitting on like that $20 easel, that's not gonna help ya. Get, ri get rid of it! I don't even wanna talk about what's going on on screen because what's going on on screen is a learning experience. Instead, I wanna talk about how for the first time, possibly ever, Artist Loft Rand products have not let me down. This easel is so much better than the cheap Royal Talon. I think it's Royal Talons. Um, the cheap Royal Talons easel that I was using. It was a little tripod one made out of aluminum. Compacts up nice and tight and you can kind of just grab it and go. It's not a good one to paint on long term. There's no real way to adjust the height of it. So either you're slouching or you're lifting your arm up too far. It's just not a good scene. So this easel, when you catch it on sale, that's a very important part, catching it on sale, is definitely worth the money that you pay for it. They'll usually, like, a couple, maybe once or twice a month, they'll have a sale where it's 40% off. A couple times a year, they'll have a sale where it's 50% off. It all, it all depends on how desperate you are for an easel. And if you really are desperate for an easel, there are table easels that work just fine. I've got, I've got two actually. I've got one, the Royal Talons one that compacts up. I was using that on top of the little tea cozy that you see in this. Actually, do you see it? One sec. So skimming through the footage, because I have it open at the same time that I record this audio. I do not see the easel that I was using before in very clear view. So ignore that. It's it's on a little table that's about um, probably about belly button height. So it's a little bit too tall to be using long term as an easel, but it was the best that I could do. But I've also got one on the side of my desk that I put like reference material on. And if you're, if you're, if, you are using a smaller space, a table easel is fine. Use one of them little uh, box easels. Those are pretty cool. You can store your materials in those. And using one of these instead of a full size floor length easel, you end up saving probably close to 150 or 200 bucks. Well, less so when everything's on sale, obviously, but you, you know, like, the table easel, one one that I got was 15 and then the other one was 20. Like you don't, if you're just starting out, you don't really need the best easel until you start to notice it holding you back. And that's kind of where I was. My setup was such that I couldn't really, my, my arm would start to hurt and my feet would start to hurt standing there for a couple hours painting, you know? Like it's just, it, it got hard on my body. So this, this was an upgrade for me so that I would actually continue to paint with oils and kind of like expand how I grow as an artist. Let's, let's just put that rant aside for a little bit. Talk about what I'm actually doing with the canvas here. I'm using, um, 
I think it was five paints. Not a very large palette. I was using uh, Cadmium Red Deep. I was using, um, I think it was Lemon Yellow, um, Phthalo Blue, Titanium White, and Burnt Umber for a, a dark tone. So yeah, that's that's another thing. When you're starting out oil painting, you don't you don't need all. They're they're called convenience paints. Is all the secondary and tertiary tones. They're they're convenience paints. You can mix them on your own for the most part. Um, there's, there's, there's some science involved in the whole mixing of paints. There's like a, you do end up messing out on some of the color wheel, but as you start to mix your paints, you realize which colors you're missing and you can fill out your palette like that. Kind of like organically, instead of buying like $200 worth of oil paints all at once. Just don't get cheap, low level oil paints. You know, the like the $20 for 20 tubes kind of paint. You, that's, you're not gonna do anything good with that. You're gonna be fighting against it the whole time. Get Winton uh, from Windsor Newton. Get uh, Gamblin 1980. Even um, Dalla Rowney Georgian paints. Those are good paints. Those are probably the best deal in terms of volume because you get a 75 mil uh, tube for about the same price that you get the Wintons. Just, um, just don't get the flake white. Get the titanium white. If just rattling off oil paints kind of like um, kind of like makes your eyes glaze over a little bit. Now that I've got the easel, I will be doing more oil paint based work. You're not, you're not going to see the end of my oil pastels, but maybe once or twice a month I'll do oil paints just to, just to show off my progress. And I will review, I've got a couple of different kinds of paints. I will review some. So I'll tell you the strengths and weaknesses of each paint and you can decide for yourself what you'd like. Oh geez, I done talked myself out of the whole thing. The easel is fine, get it on sale. Everything's awesome except for my painting, bye. So this is kind of what happens when you don't really prepare for something, you just kind of jump into it, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with just jumping into it. Maybe just don't expect your work to not look like a thumb that's been severed. But that's about it for me this week. If you like the video, don't forget to like it. You want to see more, why not subscribe? And if you're not busy, tell me in the comments why you liked it or didn't like it. Bye.